Dizzy Devils hosting the Interceptors in a cold, cold match. Dizzy killed. Um, Dizzy Devils were kind of hanging in there the first set. Um, there was about two to two. Ricky was outed. Soto threw bad to begin the set. Um, but it kind of fell apart when McFadden missed through. I mean, they need McFadden for any chance to win. They, he knows he's the leader of the team. He knows they need him, but didn't come through. Interceptors get it five to three. Second set. Interceptors just played efficiently. Every any time they got the ball, they got it. And Kyle caught Jay Jordan to start the set, and that kind of got the ball rolling. Everybody else, I mean, it was just a tit for tat set. Dizzy Devils weren't were one hundred percent efficient outside of Jay Jordan. Interceptors, Roman and Kyle were perfect, but they just had the upper hand. A good day for playing dodgeball in Florida. Too bad there was not a good team to host. The Pharaohs pretty much rolled over them, kind of got lax in the second set. The two sets, 10 to 5. First set, Dragonfish kind of offered some resistance. It was 2 to 2 at one point, but Thomas threw one to Charlie, and Charlie caught it, and it was the end of the set from there, showing he's still got it. Second set was just an absolute mess. So many unforced errors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve errors on both sides. It was just a terrible set. Farrell somehow got away with that win. They've got to play a lot better if they want to be a playoff contender. But they kind of knew they were playing the Dragonfish. Sea Dogs hosting the Cummins, hoping to get a win off of a team that is just absolutely imploding. And they were successful, the 10 to 4. <laughs> that successful. Um, Gremlins just did not play well. There's no point even. Dante missed two throws in two sets. Melissa's way bad throw. I mean, the Sea Dogs played, they played very well. The gremlins just tank. Do they keep tanking? So many missed errors, unforced errors, and what you get is what you get. Ten to four, Sea Dogs, and they gremlins are just praying for a break. Somebody forgot to tell the Margays they were a bad team. Um, they still lost, but they put up a a very good fight against one of the best talent-wise teams in the league that still hasn't really had a solid game and the Reapers set it off in Minnesota first set um, Harper I mean it was going regular and then Harper got caught by Pascal and that kind of ended things 5-2 to two. second set Pascal would had it out for J Jason he got him out the first two sets um, but Pascal missed the throw um, to Boris, and Boris caught it, and then Boris proceeded to get everyone else out, 5-3. to three. Third set, Jason just went off. He went after Pascal first and foremost. Um, Erwin and and Streets made mistakes, and it was still close because James had an error. He's just, he's just really busted. He's not what he thought he was. Um... But Reapers squeeze one out, 12 to 12, win two sets to one. It was pretty much build. It followed its bill. It lived up to its bill, whatever the saying is. Three set game, exciting, catches everywhere. First set, the gold seemed to have wrapped it up, but Joseph caught Pelletier's ball only to throw a bad throw to Simeon in the gold one, five to four. Second set, Zach was just going off. Three throws, threes outs for and a catch. Pelletier bad, uh, had an error that kind of shifted things, but Walter was caught by Travis, and that seemed to shift things. But Cats lasted through five to four. Um, final set, the goal just seemed to be a little tired out. Simeon with a bad throw. Pelletier kind of got tried to get things started. Um, but he was caught by Jared, and they just kind of ran away 5-2. Cats went 14-11, to 11, and now they're in the mix of things, and the gold 
They'll be in the mix of things, but the rankings won't show. Silverback coming into Texas form as the number one team in the league. And the Toros were prepared, but it didn't seem like it at first. The first set started with Raekwon just missing his throw. Didn't look good. And it was looking like all oh, Silverbacks all the way with Sanchito catching Lawrence. But it was Reed who caught Sanchito and then proceeded to catch Kenneth also. Three for three, two catches, five to four. Reed wins the set for the Toros. Second set, uh, Sanchito is caught by Lawrence to begin things. <clears throat> and the confidence is kind of shot. Carter has a dodge and a missed throw. Salazar is kind of hanging in there for a bit, but um, Toros are just playing high level. And this is what happens when you have more power players. Skylarks were on a mission to absolutely blow the lid off of the diamonds and do anything to get that number one ranking that they just haven't been able to get near, although they're undefeated. First set where they were just gung ho. Lines through, Elios caught, Sebastian threw, Maurice caught, five to one first set. Second set it seemed to be starting that way, but Potts got caught by Sebastian, and it was looking like the Diamonds were going to run away with it, but Maurice had two catches, two good catches, two throws, two outs. The Skylarks finished them off pretty quickly. We'll see what the rankings stack up like. Scarlet Amber coming into New York Empire Gym looking like a daunting task, but somehow they pulled through in three sets. First set was all Empire, though, as Jack, in the, the turning point, the Jack threw to Alexander. Alexander caught it, 5-2 to two first set. Second set, Jack had a solid series, 3-for-3, three three, one catch. Uh, Richard missed the throw, Sven caught it. In the set five to two final set now, Empire put everything into it. Alexander playing top notch, Richard playing top notch. Sven caught both of them to win the the set two to two and two catches. Wow, just wow! Scarlet Ember get one out. Let's see where they go after this win.